All right, welcome back, everybody. We started these Lannister Pyromancers yesterday, and we're going to finish those up today. We got this first row of cloaks done, and we're, we're, we're going to go ahead and finish those up today. So let me just kind of get some stuff ready here. All right. So we're going to finish these cloaks first. And then we'll kind of move on to some of the other parts that we got to finish highlighting. Let's turn that on. There we go. All right. Yeah, so yesterday we got these models that already had some paint on them. And we're basically just cleaning them up because there's some areas where the contrast paint that was used on them didn't sit well or it kind of pooled weird. So we're just cleaning that up a little bit. Because just on some of these flat surfaces, the contrast paints just really don't show as well. I don't think the camera does a great job of picking up on that sometimes. There we go. That way I can see it live. Because like kind of right here on the back, there's a couple spots where the paint's white and it just didn't stick. And there's other parts where it just... The high points aren't smooth looking. So we're just kind of fixing those up. And then there's other parts where it almost looks pink instead of red. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just touching that up, getting the collar, which you guys won't be able to see me get these collars just because of the angle. Okay, get the chest there. Okay, he's good. That's all we're doing with those cloaks, just kind of clean them up, give them a smooth texture instead of some of the blotchiness you get with the contrast sometimes. Reheating up the high points so the high points are the brightest color. The contrast does a pretty good job of going where it's supposed to as far as color. But there's just sometimes it just doesn't quite get it the way it naturally should look. Because like I said, usually on these type of fabrics, they do a pretty good job. All right, let me just slide that over so I can see the Facebook chat. There we go. No, we need to slide over. Boom. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just had some sandwich and it's kind of making me thirsty. These pretzels are making me thirsty. As I wait till we do the highlighting on this, that's where you're really going to start to notice the difference. Alright, I think we're pretty good there. I need to get my nerve room fixed, man. It's always hotter up here.
Yeah, so Jacob actually has a good amount of the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. So if you like Game of Thrones, they're pretty cool to paint up. But if you also like tabletop gaming, they're really... It's a really fun tabletop game. Like, if you like Game of Thrones, I would ask you why you're not playing this game. If you are a tabletop gamer. Because if you like Game of Thrones, you should have at least w your favorite faction of in this game. Because the sideboard mechanics on this game is really sweet. They uh, they let the characters that wouldn't be effective on the battlefield, so like Cersei and um, Pycelle that we're painting up here, make it where they even are effective in this game. Like there's times I've been playing Lannisters and I drop Cersei and I just hear a grumble. At least before she, the panic, the panic mechanic got changed up a little bit. Five more. Seriously, got to figure out how to best wear these things. There's times where I'm just. It's so annoying to wear this headset while I'm recording. I was using the one on the camera, but I'm sorry, you guys are going to see my hand for a second. But the camera was just, the mic on it stopped wanting to be recognized by OBS. And it just got to the point where I was just tired of messing with it. Yep, yep, yep. I'd like to know which region of Westeros they get all these dyes from. You know, a bunch of these poor people aren't getting these dyes. Up day. Maybe I need to beat you at some god tier again. So maybe I need to beat you at some god tier again. Well, I mean, I haven't played in a while, so probably. <laughs> Don't be a defeatist. You know what a defeatist is? Yeah, it's worse than that. It's like you don't even want to try to do something because you're afraid you're going to lose. You're like, what's the point? I'm just going to lose. That's a defeatist. I don't feel like that. I know you're not. I'm just picking on you. Can I jump boot to my six off my own self break? I mean, that wasn't a very long break. I don't know. It wasn't supposed to be a very long break. It just you're getting frustrated, huh? Yeah. Game. Which game was frustrating, yeah? Fortnite. Yeah, I can see how that game gets frustrating. Dude, literally, I need more. He shot me. Look, the bullet literally went straight and curved back around and shot me. Yeah, there's a lot of people that spend a lot of time playing that game. I'm sure, he just wasn't really good. There's no way you can shoot in a bullet go straight and come back around. I'd say most of the time in that game, isn't it like really hard to see like where the bullets are going? Because you're just dead all of a sudden. Because um, a sniper. Because you, because like a sniper, you make a smoke trail. Uh -huh. Literally, the trail went straight and curved. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's fine, bud. I would say I think Sean got in trouble and won't be able to play video games later. Video games. No, I'm saying he got in trouble since then. Really? Yep, doing one of the same things you did. You know what that is? What? He got caught watching YouTube on the, like, his, uh, DS. In the middle of the night. Did you watch YouTube on a DS? Yeah, you were trying to do it. Oh, DS. Sorry, sorry, Switch. Oh, I'm like, DS? I feel like one of those little yeah, DS. Yeah, DS are the older ones. That's the uh, dual screen ones. Yeah, or like the bottom. I had one more. Back in the day. Never really stopped. Well, I haven't seen you play a whole bunch. Okay, well, how am, am I going to play it here? <laughs> like, what's it called? The, the simulator thing? Yeah, Say, so, tabletop simulator is fun for some things. This one, I don't know if it would be. I don't know how you do it. Do what? Just things. Like move them and stuff. On Tabletop Simulator? Yeah. Yeah, it just has the models on there and you just move them around just on a fictional board. You ready for the passcode? Yeah. Okay, it's two, seven, what? eight, three. I just told you it. That's not the real passcode. How do you know? You would never tell me the real passcode. Why would I not tell you the passcode? Because you just don't, you wouldn't. I wouldn't, huh? No. Maybe it's a test. You're too smart for your own good, you know that? Mm -hmm. Let me finish this guy. Got two strips of clothing. You're fixing the model? Yep. Fixing them up. Why wouldn't you just spray them? Because then you lose detail every time you prime it. Mm -hmm. BRB. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do, do, do. Yeah, this part's definitely going to take the longest just because going back over it and red is, I mean, pretty much what, 60% of this model is just this red color. I usually like using a darker red for the base color, but that's fine. Got this real bright Lannister red that'll pop on the battlefield. Okay. 
One more guy. There's this big guy. Had some white eyed to paint there. Sorry, you guys couldn't see it. All right. Yeah, if you get a chance, play this game, especially if you like the universe of Westeros and Game of Thrones. Supposedly they're going to start coming out with these dragons here soon. I think, that all, I think the Targaryens coming into this game really are going to bring a bunch of people back in or just in. But I do know some people that are like, oh, I'm just going to wait until this house comes out because maybe they're a real big Targaryen or Greyjoy or whoever fan. I think we're good there. All right, now we're going to take this orange. We're going to highlight. So we're going to go up. And this is, like I said, orange is one of those colors that it doesn't it doesn't sit on its own very well, so you got to make sure you layer it. That way it looks good, because if you don't, it'll just look kind of muddied up and weird. Especially on cloth. You just want to get it on the high points too. You don't want to put it on every single fold. So you can see really starting to blend it in to the red and the orange. you almost want to just hit the high points with the orange and then just kind of pull it back and fade it into the red. Get it right where it's laying on his skin. You like you can see the outline of the body, the high folds. Okay, I think I think we're good with Picel. So. There you go. Kind of a real red orange there to pull out all that detail. This part's just going to take a little bit of work, so 
Forgive me if I'm kind of quiet while I'm working on that. There's not really any questions, and I'm just, like I said, just kind of really building this up. Orange is really easy to kind of mess up, though. Like if I just blur on a bunch of orange here, it could look really bad. So you really got to be tactical where you put it in. Okay, I think we're good there. Yep, like it. Like it, like it, like it. All right, let's kick it up. That's the thing, you kind of want to do your test a couple models and see how it looks and then just crank through them just so you can really get that design look you want and just make sure it's right and you can just mass produce it It's almost like you're dry brushing this orange onto the red to get that desired effect. Because like I said, you really don't want it everywhere. You can see some where I leave the red. Then on these higher crests where I kind of try to fade it into the red. I'll show you kind of the difference between the two so far. So non-highlight is on this side, on the left side of the screen. Highlighted is on your right side of the screen. So once again, you can just kind of see, not a huge difference, but you can definitely start to see how it gets built up and layered and starts to look like a lot of something. We'll get these skins touched up too. Some of the skins are still a little blotchy and the hair is not quite done. I need to move these paints out of the way so I can get my elbow where I need it. There we go. All right, what's today, Tuesday? Quiet Tuesday. <laughs> I 
Got the ice cream man in the background. This is getting a little warm here. If you're not in South Carolina, it's already getting, I think we're up in the 80s already. Da, 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 da. This dang song's getting stuck in my head. Some of these guys are going to be a little brighter than others, and that is fine because you start to get that variance and kind of flavor of each model. And there's sometimes in some armies, I'll even build this up to like a yellow. So I'll do like an extreme yellow highlight. I'm not doing it on these guys because I want to keep it more red. I think when you start to go up to that line of painting them like that where you add yellows it starts to become more orange and I definitely want it to appear mostly red so orange and red that's what we're going with And we got another one. Okay, getting almost halfway through. We got two more guys, and then we'll be halfway through with the orange. Like I said, you really got to be choosy where you put these oranges. Anytime you really highlight because too much highlighting just can look weird. So you really want to be selective with it. Like I said, some of these you can put more orange than on other ones. You just got to be careful because of that. They're getting a different effect when you do that. So I also got that soprano song stuck in my head. Woke up this morning. 
kind of cool to go back and watch some of these shows that you've watched a lot of. We'll say that. Okay. Yeah, and one more time, we just paint units. Because, like I said, it's really. Because the more I paint this orange, the more I'm just like, oh, how many more do I got? So you just got to kind of keep challenging yourself. But it's really easy to kind of be like, I'm done with this. We're really trying to get this done in like a couple hours. So we spent an hour yesterday about, and we're trying to do the other hour today. Alright. Almost good at this just because I'm stubborn. Because I'm just like, yep, we're just going to keep going till we're done. And I'll show you kind of what a minimal kind of extreme highlight would look like on one of these models. So if I just hit up these high points like this, like this, like that. Because some people just like doing like hard, it's called a hard hide light. That one there wasn't quite a hard highlight. Okay, so we just hit him up like that. So this is like hard highlights, right? Where you just basically put your highlight color just on these high edges. You don't try to blend any of that in. Effective and quick. I'll leave one of them like that. So if I had like two or three units of these guys, that's totally what I would do. I would just go, yep, quick highlights, boom, boom, boom. Uh, still nobody in the chat. Just one of those days. Just one of those days. 
is where you don't want to wake up. Yeah, three more left. Three more, do some hair. We'll kind of comb good. We might hit this. These arms do look a little wonky. I'll probably hit them up with a dark gray. Yeah, it's kind of cool where their cloaks almost look like fire. We are going to be doing um, the paint party again tonight. So around 9.30 Eastern Time. We're going to hit that up. This should be me and my buddy Eric again. Uh, I think I'm going to probably... I'm probably going to be working on a couple of things. I'm going to try to finish those Malifaux Ham <coughs> Hamlin models up. And then I have some God tier models that I got to paint at a still. I think when I painted with Dennis last Thursday, I was working on the Wraith. And I still have Half Tusk. And. A couple other ones I want to paint up, but Naya and Half Tusk are the two that I really want to paint because they're the models that I've been using the most. Let's see if we can move this up here if I can get a little more comfy. Cool. Because I feel like I don't have to be as up on the camera. And I can paint more comfortable this way. Right. Those got tier models are just really cool to paint. I think that game specifically, I think it looks a lot more impressive when all the stuff's painted. So my goal is to have it painted most of the stuff that way when I can go back into the gamer world we can all play with painted stuff and get more people interested in the game alright let's see what we're looking like we're going to do the skins next Skin and hair and these shoulders, these arms, I should say. Cool. Got more depth in those cloaks now, so it looks a lot better. 
looks a lot better. All right, let's do these skins. Highlight with some of this Kieslev flesh. So highlighting faces as small can be really tough. Just because you don't have as much room to work with. So when I highlight faces like that, I try to highlight just the high points of the face. So I try to highlight the, I'll show you as I do it. Try to highlight the brow. The nose. If I can, parts of the chin and cheek. And that's it. That way we can keep some of that detail in the face. And you can already see it on these models. But with the even just with these layers of paint that I put on here. There's some of it where I'm just like, there's no detail left if I keep adding paint to that spot. So that's what I was saying when you get new models. Try not to uh, reprime. Because if you got to reprime, you just lose a lot. You can lose a lot of detail. Sorry, just put a little on pie cell here. He's love is a very pale color. It's almost like if you lived in Russia, this is kind of the skin tone you would have. So this is probably a better color for the Starks. But that's why I'm kind of building up layers of different skin tones. And then just go straight to this Kislev flesh. As I keep getting paint on my mouse. Poor mouse. I feel like the faces are where a lot of people can get stuck. If you just leave kind of the wash in the eyes and around the nose, a lot of times you'll save yourself a lot of hassle because a lot of the there's just a lot of detail you can spend time doing on the face and when I that's why when I see somebody who's done a real awesome job with painting facial facial features on a uh, model I let them know I saw this Rodri who was painted up who's a god tier model basically a dwarf but my God, did those did that face look fantastic? I was like, that's a great job.
Okay, back row, and then we're done with the faces. Ooh, knock him out. Something I did notice sometimes, and I'm noticing it on these models, is the contrast paints can create a shine effect that isn't supernatural on these models that you wouldn't just see on normal humans. So I think it's just one of those things you gotta keep an eye on when you use contrast paints. Just know that there's gonna be times where it just doesn't look right. That's when you got to use your other kind of skills to bring it back in line. Okay. Okay, let's get some of this hair. Especially the blonde hair, because the blonde hair, if you have a wash on yellow, it kind of looks weird. So I generally go back, put another highlight on it. Okay, just that way it looks a little, a little better when you see it. Otherwise, it just looks weird. Same thing. Another layer and make it look good. Okay, a couple of you guys. All right, anybody else? Brown. Maybe the blind one. Okay, anybody else? I think the brown hair I'm generally just going to leave. Because it doesn't look bad. Alright, so I think the last thing we need is we're just going to take this gray. I'm just going to touch up their arms just to kind of blend it out on the high points. I think we're pretty much done with them. Alright, Pycelle needs white in his beard, so we'll handle that here in a minute. And really the reason we're doing this is because there's some areas where just those arms didn't look natural with the color. It looked very patchy. So we're just going to fix them. 
Fix them up. Oh. You know, like I said, there's just some areas where it's almost white patchy kind of looking. So we're just fixing them up. I know you guys aren't going to see this very well sometimes when I'm painting at this speed. But just know anytime on this black, I'll kind of show it on this guy. So there's some white patches, especially like right there on that elbow. You can see that's where either the paint didn't stay on or it got rubbed off. We're just fixing those mistakes or errors or whatever you want to call them. Honestly, I think part of the problem that I have with this headset is my dang hair. Because I need a haircut and it's driving me nuts. Driving me nuts. Now I'm not going to go back and paint these pants that are kind of in a similar situation. One, because they don't show really well, and two, it actually didn't come out too bad on the legs. Four more. Four more and five cells beard and we're done. Except for we'll do the basing. We'll keep it simple with a black base for these guys. All right, two more. Kind of curious to see how a lot of states are going to handle this open and backup thing. I think I'm in South Carolina. We're already kind of starting to see some of it.
can. Let me grab some white and then we'll do a couple of these. We'll start black basing this just so you guys can see what it'll look like. Oh. All right, so we really do Pycelle here. We really want this to be a dry brush because we don't want a white, white beard. We just want some white streaks. All right, so we got Pysol, and let's get these guys all facing the front here. Okay. All right, so this is kind of the unit all dolled up. Minus the black basing that we're going to do. And the more red you add to the cloaks, and the more orange that you kind of layer with it, the more you almost get like a fire effect with their cloaks. It's really cool. So, the next step for these is to get my, where is it? All right, give me one sec. I got to get my black basing paint. All right, well, this shouldn't take too long, so I think I'm actually going to knock this out on camera. So once again, I just base when I'm doing my this, this acrylic matte black. I really get it for a couple bucks at Walmart. And we're just going to paint the whole base black. I think I just got his toes, but that's okay. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just gonna put them right there. And that's all it is. And as you can see, they look black basing is just clean. So if you really hate basing, you could just keep your bases black. And most games will look just fine. Yeah, I'm like, probably one of the reasons I'm not so talkative today is because I have just been working a ton, been doing a lot of nerd work, but also just work at school. End of the school year, just trying to get it all taken care of. Okay. Yep, you do just want to watch what you're doing with this matte black because you want it to cover the base, but just got to be careful when you get close to that model. Okay, moving, moving along. Sorry, check back with the Facebook. There's old Don Juan. Which has me look white today, and that's fine. Say if you are interested in games like A Song of Ice and Fire and God Tier, you can always check out our podcast at Rage Quit Wire. And last one we did was just a God Tier episode. So we talk about a couple of the scenarios and what we like about certain champions. It's been a while since we did a Song of Ice and Fire, so I might want to go ahead and maybe do an episode on that. I know this is riveting TV, watching me base these. So I'm probably going to end it there while I finish them up. So, but once again, you can see that they're coming out really, really solid. Um, they're going to look good, especially with these black bases. You can kind of see how the red's popping off of that. And then I'll seal them and they'll, they'll look really good. So I'll, I'll post kind of like a before and after picture. Um, of the unit just that way so people can get an idea of what it looked like but yeah that's an easy way just to kind of fix models that you get is just try to keep the same color scheme if you don't hate it just because you don't want to layer too many paints because you start to lose details especially in the faces and if they have like these buttons on there on their cloaks that's something that you'd lose detail on so you just want to make sure that you're not doing that so if you can help it don't prime again and use the same colors that they were using if it's a train wreck it's caked in there and it's thick and awful you got two options you can either strip it or you can throw them out <laughs> and i've had friends do both so it's just one of those things that you got to kind of decide when you look at the model if it's going to be worth your time money and effort um 
And you can tell the models that I save that aren't a great save. I have a Victoria crew for Malifaux that I had to do this with. And the primer was awful. It had this kind of flaky characteristic to it. And it just caked in and lost some of the detail. And I saved it pretty well, but like the Vanessa Chambers model is just awful. I was pretty, and that she's a, the alt model is a lot cooler, so maybe I just got to wait for that, but. You're going to be successful with some of these saves, and generally speaking, these pyros are pretty successful. I think we got, we used the same color scheme that the original painter was wanting to use, and they turned out really good. As far as I'm concerned. Are they mo my most detailed paint job ever? No, but you got to work with the models that you get. Okay, well, now, that, now that I'm just chatting, I'm going to just finish these while I'm wrapping this up. But, yeah, don't be afraid when people have paint on models. Um, I know there are certain people in communities that have stuff that you can strip it. I would say just make sure it's somebody that knows what they're doing because... There's a difference between stripping paint from metal models and plastic. If it's a metal model, you can just use some like mean green and just let it sit in there overnight and it'll get some of that old crusty paint off. But plastic, be careful. Stripping plastic can be bad. I've seen lots of deformed models in my day. Okay, let's get two more. Yeah, if you've been giving this game a try, try it. I know Jacob has. I think he has the Free Folk Starter. I think he has the Stark and Lannister Starter. So you get both the Starks and the Lannister in that box. And the last one, what do you have? I think he just has a couple other random units. Like I think he has a Night Watch box and a. Uh, he also has a Bolton's neutral box in there too. So, really cool models. They already come assembled. So that's a win for a lot of people. So this is, obviously they're not in there because I want them to dry, but that's what they're going to look like with the black base. So, like I said, they have a nice pop to them, especially with that red against the black. So that really kind of pops the model and makes it look cool. All right, but make sure you guys check out our YouTube channel. I do a lot of things where I just do some videos on what I'm doing Uh I don't speed it up too much, but you you can speed it up yourself if you want to, or you can just skip kind of through it on different effects that you like seeing. Because there are times where I chat less just because there's not people in the chat. And when you're painting, it's tough to think about stuff besides what you're painting. Um, so yeah, but you can get these models from Jacob. He orders a lot of Song of Ice and Fire stuff. Uh, something else you can get a lot of at the Final Round Game Shop is something I'm working on right now are these Marvel Crisis Protocol models with Venom and Vision. So, a lot of cool models you can get from Jacob. A lot of cool models that I paint on stream. Um, I, I know not everybody likes watching painting, but I hope we make it at least a little entertaining, especially like tonight, what we're going to do with the paint party. So we're going to do that around 9.30 p.m. tonight, Eastern Time. So if you're interested in just hanging out, watching people paint, just some talking in the background, we'll have both chats for Facebook and YouTube up. That way people can just hang out if they want. Just talk, ask questions, uh, see what nerd games they like. I don't know, anything. So I'm going to hang up here. Make sure you all support your local game store. And like I said, check out the Rage Quit Wire YouTube channel if you have not done so already. All right, roll dice, throw salt, we're out.